Very good. You know, it takes people just, just like, you know, in your life, anything good that's accomplished in life, it, take, it takes a group of people to do it. It takes people working together uh, to accomplish something good in life. So this event tonight is going to be amazing when it's all said and done. It took a lot of people to make it happen, so we're very thankful. I'm going to speak to you for just a few minutes, very few minutes. <clears throat> How many of you got bracelets when you came in? Every one of you should have because there's not more than 800 people. If you didn't get a bracelet, get, go get one. <clears throat> has a scripture on it. We're going to read this scripture. 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is, in, anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And I'm going to read this definition. I found this one day. This was the Passion Translation. I'm going to read it to you this way. It said, This would include our old identity, our old life of sin, the power of Satan, the religious works of trying to please God, our old relationships with the world, and our old mindsets. We are not reformed or simply refurbished. We are made completely new by the union with Jesus Christ. So that's what I want to speak to you a little bit about tonight, is, is our identity in Christ. I Googled it. There is, <clears throat> I think, over 70% of America identifies somehow with a religion of Christianity. Okay, Christianity is something where Christ is involved. We understand who Christ is. We understand that if we believe in Christ, we understand and we believe who he was and what he did. We understand there's a salvation there. So if 70% of America identify with some type of Christianity, it looks different depending on, you know, our race and, and relig different religions, but Christianity itself, 70% of people, they identify with that. Okay? So, so I got to thinking about that, and I was praying about this, talking about our identity in Christ. If, if 70% of America and our communities, our cities, and down, all the way down to our community, wherever you live within the city, if we, so many of us identify with Christianity and Christ, then why do we struggle with the things that we struggle with in our communities? Why is depression so heavy in our communities? Why is addiction everywhere? We hear all the time that our country is in an addic addiction crisis, opiate crisis. And I, I got news for you. Our country and our world has been in, it's been in an addiction crisis for a long time. It's not just now happening. It's been going on for a very long time. It's been going on since Bible days. But we have so many things going on right now, and there's so, so much awareness that's being raised about it. That's part of this event. But I don't just want to raise awareness of the, those problems in society. I want to raise awareness of the solution by pursuing Jesus Christ who set you free from those problems. That's what we want to raise awareness tonight. So if so many of us identify with Christianity, then why do we struggle so much in our communities? And I'm going to tell you why. This is what I experienced in my personal life. If we have been born again and we have received Jesus Christ into our heart, at one time in our life, we have been given a new identity and a new creation. I don't care if you did it when you was 10 or 12 years old and you don't remember it. If you accepted Christ, you became a new creation, a new person at that moment. Okay? Your old sin nature was crucified with Christ. You are now dead to sin, and you, are, and you no longer are enslaved to sin the moment that you accept Christ. But so many of us still struggle with these issues in our life. We struggle with these issues. Uh, I was a born-again Christian, raised in church my entire life. <clears throat> Until I went through my addiction and my struggle, uh, I never really understood what grace was about. I never understood the depths of God's love and how far God's love would chase me down to the darkest corners, the worst choices, the worst decisions, me, dis me destroying my life and everyone around me. God's love pursued me every step of the way. And that's what I want you guys to remember tonight, that even though you may be struggling, God's love still pursues you. But even though that you may be having failures in your life, that does not remove that you are a new creation. And this is going to be hard, this is going to, be hard to digest right here, okay, for some. But nowhere in Scripture have I found that says, Bobby, you are a new creation today. All of this is, you are dead to all of this. Nowhere did I say... Or did I, nowhere did I find it where it said, if you stumble and you stumble and you stumble this many times, I am removing your new man identity away from you. I didn't find that in Scripture. Okay? And again, it may be a little hard for some to digest. Once we are a new creation, we are a new creation. Okay? We are dead to sin. Why do, well, okay, well then why do I struggle with sin all the time? I'm going to tell you where we get caught in America, in our communities, where some of us get caught and where I get caught, where I got caught myself 
is all of that we have in our new man identity, Christ in us, everything that that gives us, where we get caught up is we fail to understand that we must die to our old man in order to set our new man free. Okay? It is us dying to our old sin nature that sets our new man free. So we get born again, and we continue to live the way everything that God says we're dead to, we continue to do that. So it, we continue to struggle with those things. But we don't have to struggle with those things. Our new man identity, I'm going to tell you what it looked like for me. It said, you know that we have a civil war going on inside of us in the spiritual world, the spiritual realm, civil war. It's the new man that we have, the new creation identity, and it's our old sin nature, constantly butting heads with each other. The old sin nature is constantly dragging the lake. He wants to find some of him. He wants to go out and do what he or she wants to do. Dragging the lake, the new man is over here saying, nope, I don't want to do that. I'm a new creation in Christ. I'm dead to that. I don't do that anymore. It's a, it's a battle. It's a conflict. So I was going through, this was, you know, uh, pretty much probably right in the middle, maybe two-thirds towards the end of me, my battle with addiction, there was one evening where uh, I was at the house. It was late. It was 1 or 2 in the morning. I was sitting down on the floor in my bar, <clears throat> sitting down on the floor. I had Christian Rock playing. Christian Rock, the reason I have such a passion for it is it was my main connection through a lot of hardships in my life. It was my only connection to God. I have a major passion for it because it kept me connected. So I'm sitting in the floor, I've got my liquor bottle sitting right next to me, and, and I'm probably in, in about two weeks in to a drinking binge, heavy drinking binge. So I'm sitting there, and I'm wore out. The, all of the shame, the guilt, and everything that is weighing heavy on me. I'm just plumb wore out, totally wore out. So I'm sitting there on the floor, I'm talking to God. I am trying to black out drunk. I'm trying to do this. I'm drinking, and I, know, I knew how to black out drunk. You know, I did that quite often. I knew what it took. I was trying that night, and I could not do it. I was getting frustrated. So I'm sitting there on the floor in our bar that evening, the, the bar being just a wet bar. You know, we don't have a full scale. Well, we might have had a full scale bar at one time, but that's not the point. So I'm sitting there on the floor, and I'm struggling. I'm hurting. I'm confused. And, I, and I'm just kind of I'm having this conversation with God. And somehow through all of the intoxication, God broke through. And, and, and had this very clear conversation with me. And I told God, so you know what, God, I'm tired. I'm tired of fighting. I just cannot see how I can walk out of this. There's too much damage. There's too much problem. There's too much pain. There's too much difficulty. I do not see how I can walk out of this. I, and I told God with these words. I said, it would probably be easier for me, for everyone around me, and probably be easier for you if I just drank myself to death tonight. Did I truly want to die? I don't believe I did. No. But at that moment, I'm thinking, I'm just done. I'm ready to give up. Why fight something that I don't feel like I'm ever going to overcome? So in essence, I was kind of thrown in the towel there. So I sat there, and I just stared off, just stared off in, in, into the room, uh, sitting there, and God began to speak to me. <clears throat> and uh, and what, I felt like, what I felt like happened in that moment is, is God said, you know, nowhere in my word do I give you the option to give up? Throwing in the towel is not an option in, in God's word. If you, if you do a search, how many times does quit or, or, or is something, anything that, that relates to quitting in the middle of a battle, you're not going to find it in God's word. Why? Because God is in our life and he's fighting these battles with us, along with us. Why would we quit a battle when we have God on our side in the battle. There, in other words, in, in God's reasoning, why would you quit when I've given you everything you need? And that's what he told me that night. Why would you want to quit when you have everything that you need to overcome this already living on the inside of you? And I'm sitting there talking to God. I'm like, well, what are you talking about? Everything that you need is already provided in your new man identity, your born-again identity. Christ in you has everything that you need. So God begins to tell me in that moment, I've been years into this addiction, I'm sitting there hurting, and God begins to tell me that every, everything, your freedom was provided for you before you was ever bound, and it's been living on the inside of you and your new, new man identity. So I'm sitting here, and I'm confused, and I'm thinking this stuff, and, and I'm like, you know, I, you know, it's just confusing. So God's telling me this, he's telling me this. And, and I, but what I know, I know it's true, though. I know. So I'm saying, I'm like, okay, God, well, why this, why this? And, and what God simply told me that evening, 
He said, it's time to set your new man free. And how he told me I do that, it's time to start laying down the idols in your life. You want to live in complete and total freedom from addiction, depression, and everything that comes along with it, then you've got to lay it down. Because see, for me, addiction and being a Christian and growing up that way, I prayed a hundred times, if not a thousand times, God, why will you take, why won't you take this away from me? Please take this away from me. Every time I prayed to God and said, why won't you remove this from me? God's answer to me every single time was, why won't you lay this down for me? Because it had become an idol in my life. It was an issue of idolatry going on in my life. So every time I asked God, fix my problems, take these desires away, all God would say, why don't you lay those desires down? Lay it down and worship me and pursue me once again in your life. So what God was telling me was, man, it's time to set your new man free, but he ain't going to be set free as long as you're worshiping these idols and holding these other things up in your life. I had, so he began to start a process, and it's called a transformation process. Grew up in church my whole life. Never went through a transformation process of denying myself and pursuing only God's desires and God's word in my life. I'm very sad, but there's people all over churches, all over the world that's been in church their whole life that has never learned how to die to their self and set their new man free and live in the fullness of what they have in them. So I was scared, very scared, because <clears throat> for me, I drank so much, it was my... It was, it was my escape, and I was scared, and I told God, I said, I just don't even see how it's going to happen. And some of you can relate to this. It don't have to be addiction. It don't have to be a substance. It can be any other thing in your life. Relate it to where you may be at right now. Uh, God just, I mean, immediately popped this, Psalms 23 and 4, and it, it says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil, for thou art with me. So, you know, a lot of times we think of physical death when we read that Psalms, but what God was telling me that night is, I'm going to be with you, you're going to walk through a valley of death. It is going to be dark and difficult to die into yourself and laying down your idols, but I'm going to be with you. Do not be afraid. I will walk with you. Christ in you will bring you out on the other side completely free if you start the process and start moving that direction. And Christ in me, that's exactly what did. So what happened that evening is there was a collision that happened. You know, in our lives, there's a time to be born in our life and there's a time to die. And I'm not talking in the physical, I'm talking in the spiritual. There's a time that we're born again. We're talking about our new man versus our old man. There's a time that we're born again, and we receive that new man identity, but there's a time to die to the old man, the old sin nature. And somewhere in your life, my friend, they are going to collide. They are going to butt heads. You are going to come to a decision in a place in your life where if you want to live in the fullness and the freedom that God has for you, that Christ in you carries and everything that it brings, you are going to have to die to, to your old sin nature and lay down the idols in your life. You have to. For me, it was that moment. That, that was my moment. It was a collision course. My old man and my new man, they were butting heads. If, you, if you've never done this, go, go, go look up on, on YouTube a couple of big old rams out there that are butting heads. Look it up. It, it's, it's, it's intense. It's very intense. It's a very intense collision, and it was for me that night. Because what God said to me, I want to set you free, but you won't allow me to set you free. You lay these down and allow me to come out and start flowing through you in the new creation that you are. So for me, that's what it was. I had to begin the way that I changed. I had to change the way that I thought. Uh, <clears throat> and I struggled after that. So Proverbs 24 and 16 says, For though a righteous man falls seven times, they, they rise again. So what God told me, you're going to fall, and it's you stumbling and falling does not remove your righteousness. You stumbling and falling does not take away God's grace and love for you. You stumbling and falling sets you up for God's grace and love. That is what it is there for. It is not there for judgment and condemnation. So through this process, I fell, but you know what? It did what was different this time is I got back up, and I started pursuing my identity. I fell again. As a matter of fact, after that moment, that collision course, I think I went to my fourth medical detox facility and a 90-day program after that, rehab program, after that evening. But I had started pursuing my new man identity and dying to myself. And that was a wicked process of dying to myself, but I wasn't afraid because God said he would be with me. So we have to change the way that we think. We have to change the way that we think. So for my freedom from addiction and depression, I'm, this is probably the best way that I can put it. It wasn't so much just a road to, uh, 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 to recovery like a lot of us view it as. 
for me, it was a road to discovery. You know, the world understands it. It's a road to recovery. For me, it was a road of discovery in my life because I discovered for the first time in my entire life who I truly was. So why, does it, why do our communities, who 70% of us identify with a, a, a Christian faith, why do we struggle with so many things? We have no idea who we are. We have no idea the power that lives on the inside of us. The power to overcome any struggle in our lives lives on inside of us. That knowledge is powerful, and that's what catapulted me to freedom. So really what it is, is once we understand that knowledge of who Christ is in, who Christ is in us and who we are in Christ, that knowledge is powerful. When we understand that, we begin to move towards that identity. We begin to focus on that. We begin to focus on moving towards God, connecting and just growing to know God like you've never known Him before. And in this transformation process, ultimately what you do in this transformation process, ultimately what you do is you start becoming who you already are because you are already everything that you're trying to seek after in your new man identity. We just have to walk away from the old so we can start walking into the new. Amen. That's what we have in Jesus Christ. This, those bracelets, I want those bracelets to be a reminder to you. I want it to be a reminder to you. Come on up and take this thing all the way. Uh, that, that scripture is on there. If you stumble, it's okay. You can just leave. Take. If you stumble, it's okay. I want that to remind you that you're a new creation. No man can take away your new man identity. No man can take away Christ in you. No amount of judgment can take that away from you. It doesn't matter how you stumble. It doesn't matter if you're going through depression. It doesn't matter what your struggle is and what your problem is. No one can take away the grace and the new man identity if you've accepted Jesus Christ in your life. If you haven't, you will have that opportunity tonight before this evening is over. And, and with that, if you accept Christ tonight or you recommit your life to Christ, when this concert is over, our ministry, Rise Above Ministries, has a table back over here. We want you to come over there so we can give you a gift. We want to meet you. We have a prayer room. If you need prayer, we'll take you in there and we'll pray with you. But we want to connect with you. So I pray that tonight, that through tonight, just go ahead and stand on your feet. I want to, I want to give a praise to, to, to our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords. I want to give a praise out to Jesus Christ, our new man identity, Christ in us. Let's give God praise tonight. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> Tonight, what we're going to do, we, we are going to celebrate our new man. Okay, we're going to celebrate our new man, who we are in Christ. We're going to celebrate our new man. We're going to, since the name of my show, and we, I don't know if we got the slide up, but you've probably seen it. The name of my radio show is called Rockin' the New Man. That is what we're going to do. We are going to rock the new man tonight. Decipher Down is about to come up and take stage, so we really need you guys to get loud. So tonight, we want to, we're going to rock our new man and we are going to shed our old man. We're going to shed the sin nature like we are already dead to. And we're going to celebrate our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ tonight. Welcome to Cypher Down. <laughs>